Hi, my name is Flonnie Coleman. I'm a creative director and co-founder of XCIV Pictures. The thing that excites us the most about filmmaking is telling stories about our home. And it's exactly that that I got to do with this film when we made Lulo the Great. As you now know, Lulo the Great is a film about one thing, Lulo, a boy who I met before making that film that sparked this entire creative endeavor. The more you get to know him, the more you realize that he's not just a boy with a dream, he's a boy who lives in his dreams. Planning a magic show is very similar to planning and creating a short film. Both can be broken down into specific stages and the most important ones happen before you shoot or find yourself on stage. We break these stages down into three. Pre-production, production and post-production. The recommendation I give to you wanting to make your own short films is prepare, prepare, prepare. Because pre-production will enable everything else to go smoothly, especially when you have time constraints. From locations, cast to props, you might need a call in favors, beg, borrow and steal, or pay for things. But it's very important to have contracts in place and know exactly what your constraints are around each of those resources. For us, because we were telling a true story, the resources we needed were finite. They were what Lulo interacted with and used on his day-to-day -day life. And that made life very simple but we still had to be exact about location permissions and cost permissions. One of our core philosophies is knowing your gear, because if you know what your gear can do, you can push your own creative boundaries. So for some insight onto the gear we used, why we used it, and what it enabled us to create, I'm gonna cut back to Luke in studio. When shooting a short film, choosing the right gear is really important. For this one, we decided to go for the Sony A7S III, along with some prime lenses like the 24mm, 35mm and 85mm. The reason we went for this setup is because it's small and lightweight but still delivers amazing image quality. When you're working in somebody's home, you really don't want to be too intrusive, so a setup like this is perfect. For the moving shots, we decided to use a gimbal. The reason for this is, with a gimbal, it's just so easy to get tons of great content because all you need to do is literally pick it up and shoot. And when you're doing a short film like this, you can never have too much content. It's always great to be able to work with a big library of different shots from different angles in post. What I love about using Sony gear is that we never really have to worry about the camera. As long as we're doing our jobs properly, then we always know that the camera is going to deliver amazing results. For me personally, this is the first shoot that I worked with someone as young as Lulo. And that came with very unique responsibilities. Because Lulo is the person who wants to shoot the most on set. He has the most energy, he's the person thinking of the next thing to do. But when you're working with someone that young, you need to be responsible for their time and follow rules and best practices that have been established for their safety. But it's not just about knowing the limits of your young cast. It's also about knowing the limitations of your crew and yourself. I'm a huge believer on having snacks, 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 snacks. If you have snacks on set, no one goes hungry and it brings down grump and makes everyone a lot happier on the day. The two most time consuming things we interacted with during production were lighting and shooting the VFX shots. Lighting meant that specific members within our team had to monopolize a space before we could get access to that and planning ahead made sure that those members didn't feel rushed when they needed to do that. With these shots, we tried to bring into the real world how Lulo sees the world every day. And that meant that we shot for safety, safety, safety. If you're going to do VFX shots, practice them beforehand. 
do them quick and dirty and do them in your studios so that you know the post-production process as well as the shots themselves. That means that you'll be able to get the perfect shots that your VFX team or your future self needs to achieve the effect you're going for. Jumping into post-production, the thing I was most thankful for was scheduling enough post-production time. Again, because it's a short film, it's very easy to get tunnel vision around shoot days and think, we'll solve the pre-production, we'll solve the post-production in our own ways. But having enough time for post-production really means that you can publish the piece you want to instead of the piece you're able to finish. The two most often neglected parts of post-production are grading and sound design. But grading is an amazing tool to give your film a holistic look. If you've shot in many spaces, you can give your film a unique identity with an overall color grade. And if you're moving between different spaces, you can communicate the identity of those spaces by their sound, not just their visuals. You have a set of constraints, the footage you've shot and the assets you have access to. But the creative decisions you can make when bringing those two together are unlimited and seeing how one little trim over here or sound effect over there completely changes the film is the most wondrous part of creating a short film for me. There are so many stories just like Lulo's waiting to be told. So get out there and show them to me. With the gear we have access to today, the barriers have never been lower. And with this film festival as an excuse, and also some maybe great prizes to motivate you, I would encourage you to engage with the stories that make you laugh, make you cry, and best exemplify the spaces and people around you. Because when I've done that, I've never felt more fulfilled as a creative.